It's Monday. It's May 8th. And the word of the day is pilknusia, a Finnish word that means an aggressively pedantic person. Used in a sentence, the literal translation of pilknusia is comma fucker because Finland <laughs> is amazing. What's what's awesome is the thought of all the Finnish comma fuckers in the audience going like, "Oh, I want to correct your pronunciation, but then I'd be a comma fucker." God damn it. <laughs> yeah. And look, Heathen Noel would never fuck a comma, but I've heard they've been trying to fuck a colon for years. Well, you know, I've gotten to a semicolon at least. <laughs> I am no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright and broadcasting delayed from America's far center. We are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, someone tries to make a fajoul out of New Jersey. (sighs) Get ready for more of that. (laughs) The Supreme Court proves they're above reproach by jumping really high when it shows up. And Tucker Carlson really wants to connect with you on LinkedIn. (laughs) (laughs) But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow Skeptic Rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, we have a pre-lead story, thanks to Ann Perkins. Off the coast of Newfoundland, there's an iceberg shaped like a giant penis. It's in Conception Bay, and the photographer is from the town of Dildo. That is all real, I promise. And it's got balls. It's it's a cock and balls. And Mm. Dildo is only a 17-minute drive from the town of Spread Eagle. It's like somebody left their fucking 12-year-old son in charge of the simulation over the weekend. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's definitely less Matrix and more troubled kids Roblox by the day. Yeah, right, exactly. (laughs) In our lead story tonight, there's no level of ineptitude where trying to overthrow the government becomes legal. At least... That's the message handed down from the D.C. jury that convicted Enrique Tarrio and three other leaders of the far-right terrorist organization, the Proud Boys, on charges of seditious conspiracy. The four faced potential decades in prison in response to their part in planning and executing history's stupidest coup. Uh, That is, of course, the, the January 6th riot at the Capitol that sought to prevent Joe Biden from taking power through a little known legislative maneuver called dibs. (laughs) <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. January 6th is literally dumber than dibs. It's yeah. the legislative equivalent of calling dibs retroactively. <laughs> On the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the trial itself was interesting, both from a jurisprudential and from a just, I don't know, fucking Jerry Springer-esque perspective. Sure. Yeah, when they die, nobody's going to care. Well, that's so not how like I that, meant yeah. it, but that too, yeah. <laughs> Um, it was originally estimated that it would take somewhere between five and seven weeks and ended up going on for over three months amid frequent delays, repeated calls for mistrials, multiple shouting matches with the judge, relationships between the two teams of lawyers that the New York Times diplomatically described as frayed, and one juror alleging that they were being followed. You know it was the dumbest proud boy trying to be a spy and this juror just being like, hey man, I can see you. I can obviously, when I look back, you hold up Mein Kampf and pretend you're reading. I know you're a proud boy following me. This is nothing. I mean, who would have thought that the legal proceedings for the guys who thought that they could take over the government by stealing Nancy Pelosi's golden idol (laughs) wouldn't go smoothly? I am shocked. Kind of on them. But beyond the drama, there were also some really interesting twists and turns, just like from a legal perspective. Uh, For example, Tario, the, the de facto leader of the organization, wasn't even in Washington, D.C. on January 6th, having been literally kicked out of the fucking city by a judge a couple days earlier after he got arrested over some fucking high-capacity rifle magazines. Uh, There also wasn't, like, a smoking gun in the form of fucking Acme blueprints on how they were going to storm the Capitol building. And uh, honestly, given how stupid everybody involved is, that's a surprise. I would have guessed there was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they they the might Whitmer still kidnappers? be out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and now, but instead, prosecutors used a series of messages from Proud Boy group chats uh, to show that there was a pattern of behavior and a general call for revolution, as well as plans to occupy several crucial buildings in Washington, which included the House and Senate office buildings around the Capitol. I love how they thought that would fucking matter. Right. Like, even if the Proud Boy mob took over every single government building, we'd be like, yeah, Biden's still president. We we did it anywhere else. Sure, He's yes. <laughs> oh, we did it at man. the burning station. <laughs> we did it at Zoom. Like, Guys, anything. I'm starting to think the white supremacist cult based on a cut song from Disney's Aladdin doesn't have a firm grasp on our electoral process. It's Is this good, possible? crazy, isn't it? 
Now, d- defense attorneys took particular issue with the uh, with the judge's decision to allow prosecutors to present evidence about violent behavior and language from members of the Proud Boys that had only a tangential connection to the defendants, which they dubbed as guilt by association. But like the guys who were convicted were the leaders of the group. So yeah, man, when you lead a group that does an illegal thing at your urging, you're guilty no matter how well you know the people who did it. And I should point out that of the five defendants in this case, the guy who actually did the most violent and destructive shit during the riot of the five of them was found not guilty on the sedition charge specifically because he wasn't part of the group's leadership. Okay, so if I'm hearing Noah correctly... The way to fix our Supreme Court is a dedicated group of people who really want to play Simon Says. I feel like I I figured this out. they did get convicted, Eli. Now, (laughs) it remains to be seen exactly what kind of punishment these guys are going to face, though the seditious conspiracy charge alone carries a potential prison term of up to 50 fucking years. And on top of that, all five men, even the one acquitted... Uh, of the sedition thing, were also convicted of obstruction of an official proceeding, conspiracy to prevent an officer from discharging duties, obstruction of law enforcement during civil disorder, destruction of government property, and aiding and abetting. Uh, and for whatever it's worth, when it came time to sentence Stuart Rhodes, the, the inept pirate leader of the Oath Keepers who was convicted on the same charge over the same fucking riot, the Department of Justice sought a 25-year prison sentence. Yeah, but he'll probably only see about 12 and a half because... Because he's missing an eye. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> because he shot himself in the shot eye. shot himself he in the face while well, well demonstrating how to safely operate a firearm. So, yeah. So, he did. <laughs> so far, we're looking at 600 plus convictions in relation to the January 6th riot. And there appear to be a few more to come. And not for nothing. But if Enrique Tario can be convicted based just on his role as a leader within the organization, his violent rhetoric and his effort to instigate the riot... I feel like the dude who told them to stand back and stand by probably should be too. I, 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 I'm sure I'm hoping for too much there, but also him. Yeah. And quick while we're on a story that actually improved my mental health, we should probably pause for a word from this week's sponsor, BetterHelp. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. What are you doing? Be careful. I am being careful. Ty Ty, H. Doug. What are you guys up to? And, hey, what's with all the ketchup? Did I lose an election again? No, no, sir. See, as it becomes more and more likely that we're going to have to testify, Sarah and I have taken some rather extreme measures to take care of our brains. Not me. I only remember stuff for, like, 14 seconds. I'm like a goldfish. Okay, but Tyler, if you're really looking to take care of your brain, why not try therapy with BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Well, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. BetterHelp, because Sarah Huckabee Sanders can't pull the parts you don't like out of the back of your skull. What's BetterHelp? Oh, right, because of, of the memory thing. Yeah. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Putting the Mon in Monarch News. What? Regular listeners to The Skeptocrat will know that each of us like to indulge our own personal interests on this show. Noah talks about space stuff. Heath yells at us for not reciting 90s lyrics in perfect unison with him over a Zoom call. (laughs) And I follow my favorite international tradition, the English monarchy. I know you know those songs. Monarchy. And I got a heaping dose of it this past weekend as King Charles III held as humble and thoughtful a coronation (laughs) as one can in a golden chariot. Yeah, right. (laughs) Literally a golden chariot. It would have been less pretentious if he arrived on an actual dragon flying in to wherever they do that thing. Jesus. And by the way, you can obviously tell what a big fan Eli is of the British monarchy by his spot on use of the term queen mother historically. (laughs) Um, And the fact that he just now called it the English monarchy. But yeah. uh (laughs) It's in my heart. That's okay. all that matters. It's That's, about the yep. it's love of the game. <laughs> now, 
I'm going to throw out there that a lot of negative Nancys out there have criticized the ceremony as being out of touch or no. old fashioned, but they it were- was a modern to- golden chariot <laughs> thing that we Thank did. Thank you. Yes, this is what I'm getting to, but- they were made to look like the smudgy-faced rubes that they are when Charles' first words as king were, quote, I come not to be served, but to serve. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Done. then And then they anointed him with holy oil, symbolizing <laughs> the sacred nature of his rule. He was vested with an imperial mantle, and the Archbishop of Canterbury placed the ancient crown of St. Edward onto his head. <laughs> yes. But he said, I'm here to help. Yeah, no, he did. You gotta did. watch the video of the putting the crown on the head. <laughs> it's insane. If you're getting a new divine leader, and the Archbishop guy has to balance the crown like he's playing late game Jenga just to avoid a spinal injury <laughs> to that king, maybe... Uh, everything that's happening is fucking stupid. Look, see, Every single you thing. Absolutely, it looks like like there was a like you know like a pill that has child proofing on it. He had to keep twisting it, pushing it, <laughs> twisting it different ways. <laughs> God, Jesus! But but I guess as a country that's set to hopefully reelect a president old enough to have babysat King Chucky back in the day, I don't know that we can attack from this angle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's fair. fair. Oh, ooh, ah, fun fact, thanks to foreign correspondent Michael Marshall, I also learned that during the coronation, King Charles was presented with, I am not joking, the solid gold scepter of equity. Yeah, it's equity <laughs> and something, thing? but yep. yeah, yes, yeah, the rod of equity and justice Yikes. or some shit. Well, yeah, and if you were thinking, well, that's no basis for a system of government, wait until you hear about the literal strange woman with the sword. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But of course, not everything was sunshine and rainbows. I'm talking, of course, about Charles's super ungrateful daughter-in-law, Meghan Markle. That's right. <laughs> okay. She ruined everything by staying home from the ceremony just because maybe, if you believe her, the king once asked what race her babies would be. Oh, Unacceptable. It's disrespectful to the ceremony. She should have come. Also... I have to talk about this because this is so funny. Several people, like, in London were arrested for booing near horses. Yeah. Because it's dangerous. Right. No, you could do irreparable harm for their self-esteem. By the way, that was also <laughs> on her fucking son's birthday. The The coronation was on uh, Archie or whatever's birthday. I thought that was a funny little... I, 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 I'm sure they didn't do that on purpose, but... Ah, uh, I am not. <laughs> I well, sure is a little sure. bit stronger though. I, I didn't. I didn't mean to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if they threw much. Archie a giant birthday to upstage the coronation, that would. Have been <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, we need a uranium chariot. This is a big deal. Yeah, Come right, on, right. <laughs> Corey. This happen. As a four-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, I, for one, am very excited for Britain to redo all its mailboxes and its money, and it's, which it's yeah. supposed to do yeah. now, uh-huh. an act that they have been putting off like they're renewing grandma's contract at the old age home. But it's the only possible way for British money to look sillier and to lose more value. So yeah. I hope they do it. Yeah, <laughs> get out there. My favorite part of the coordination was the live tweeting from Marsh. Oh, so I good. didn't catch the, the golden scepter of whatever the fuck. But at one point he wrote, now he's putting on the sacred oven glove of justice and <laughs> grace. <apparently. laughs> the one glove thing was a little fucking weird. Eventually Marsh tweeted, I hope he just keeps adding things. And then he, he put up a picture of Joey from Friends wearing all the clothes of Chandler. Amazing. Which I, really I saw a TikTok <laughs> that was the I don't want to be around anymore, but he's all covered in the crown stuff. Could I be wearing any more scepters and crowns and bullshit of truth <laughs> and equity? Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and in Ritz control news, oh, nice. the Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing last week to address the issue of the Supreme Court being a giant embarrassment. Of course, that includes Clarence Thomas refusing to recuse himself from a J6 case that related to treason by his wife. Clarence Thomas failing to mention hundreds of thousands of dollars in luxury gifts from billionaire GOP mega donor Harlan Crow. Harlan Crow being an avid collector of Nazi memorabilia. Neil Gorsuch doing property deals with the head of a law firm that's argued before the high court numerous times. John Roberts' wife making millions of dollars by placing attorneys with top law firms who also argued before the high court. 
the leaking of draft opinions, like the one that overturned Roe v. Wade. And last but not least, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add six more. Alito, Coney Barrett, Gorsuch, Roberts, Thomas, and Kavanaugh. Yeah. What the fuck are we doing? Yeah, as much of a, an embarrassment as their off-the-field issues are, their on-the-field issues are still far more worthy of censure. Yeah. So the basic idea of the hearing was to establish a very simple code of ethics. Apparently, the highest-ranking judges in the country need that to be written down like the classroom rules at kindergarten, and they don't have one yet. And of course, you'd want to hear from the members of the court. So committee chair Dick Durbin invited Chief Justice Roberts. And Roberts said, no, thank you. I would not like to go to that. Apparently, we need to maintain separation of powers so Roberts cannot do a hearing of any kind. That's what he said. So Durbin started the hearing by saying, answering legitimate questions from the people's elected representatives is one of the checks and balances that helps preserve the separation of powers. That was like his intro, which was fun. So we did an ethics hearing about the Supreme Court without anyone from the Supreme Court so as to be extra ethical. I mean, to be fair, Heath, an ethics hearing with them present is inevitably going to involve a lot of meaningful glares. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Yeah, it's hard to argue that anything would be made more ethical by the presence of John Roberts. But I, but I feel like this is one of those exceptions. Yeah. Yeah. He's our swing vote. He's our hope for being you know, reasonable. God. So the basic argument from the sane people was to have rules of some kind. <laughs> and the other side of the argument was, no, we, we don't want that. The only two Republicans to even grant the basic premise of having ethics rules for the court were Tom Tillis and Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham was the voice of reason in this moment. Jesus. But actually, no, he wasn't. Of course he wasn't. Graham and Tillis want the rules for the Supreme Court to be handled by the Supreme Court. That's what they meant. <laughs> too many checks and balances. That's what I always say our problem is in the U.S. Right. It's just too yeah. fair up in here. <sighs> and the rest of the Republicans either copied the homework from John Roberts or they just went limp like we couldn't see him. The separation of powers argument, according to Republicans who very clearly don't understand it, goes something like this. The Constitution says that no branch of the federal government can tell any other branch what to do ever at all, ever. Not how it works. The way it actually works is, of fucking course they can. It's called checks and balances. That's the point, yeah. Which was yeah. basically the whole point of the Constitution. Just a few examples. Congress gets to say how many people are on the court, and we've changed it six times. The Senate literally approves or denies membership to the court. And Congress made something called the Ethics in Government Act, which says that the Supreme Court justices have to disclose their finances, including, I don't know, giant gifts from billionaire neo-Nazis, which was the entire point of the hearing in the fucking first place. But, on the other hand, making rules for the court is a witch hunt against Clarence Thomas, and that's not fair. And Republican Senator John Cornyn made that point by bringing up Anita Hill and playing a video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to remember that Clarence Thomas doesn't just not deserve the job now. He literally never should have had the job. Yeah, yeah it's, it's important. Right. I'm not sure why anybody thought enforcing ethics rules disproportionately affects our side was a good argument. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So after an ethics hearing, we landed on rules are stupid. We're not doing that. <laughs> and I'm really not exaggerating. Senate Republicans wouldn't even consider a bill offered by fellow Republican Lisa Murkowski. All it said was the court has to write down a code of conduct within a year. Any code. You guys just need to write something. Write anything down as a code. No, that was asking too much for Republicans. The rulers of the rules can't have rules to rule by. Right. That's where we landed. <laughs> Official motto of this Supreme Court. Yeah, we found Fuck. it. Money. Yeah. Mm. Dr. Seuss hellscape. <laughs> and in still tucking that face, apparently, news tonight. Just firing Tucker Carlson wasn't enough to get him to stop embarrassing the shit out of Fox News, which Media Matters has been gleefully <laughs> reminding us over the past week. Uh, they've spent the last few days dribbling a series of increasingly problematic videos and revelations about the formerly top-rated cable news host, uh, which, by the way, I accidentally typed as cable news hose, and then I had to spend a minute deciding whether changing it was a correction or not. Uh, but, but apparently... <laughs> 
Fox has had enough, so so they sent a cease and desist letter to Media Matters, ordering them to stop distributing the footage, which the letter calls confidential intellectual property. Is it? So yeah, a, a pretend news agency just sent a cease and desist letter to a real news agency, <laughs> asking them to cut it out with all the news. With the news, yeah. So yeah, so so we don't know exactly how Media Matters got a hold of the footage, but it goes a long way towards explaining why Carlson was fired. The Fox leaks revelations include, but are not limited to, behind the scenes video of him discussing a sexual technique with Pierce Morgan. Ugh. Yikes. Uh, saying Fox's streaming service sucks, which is true, but he's still not supposed to say it. Uh, calling a lawyer for Dominion a, quote, slimy little motherfucker and asking his female makeup artist if they have pillow fights in the women's restroom. On camera. On Again, we have to emphasize. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, this came around the same time that the New York Times reported that they'd obtained a video of Carlson making incredibly sexist comments about his female viewers. Uh, and, of course, this all comes right on the heels of his comment about how white men fight. So you can see why Fox's <laughs> lawyers wanted to stem the bleeding a, a bit. But what they've done instead is they've tied a nice little bow around this story for folks like me that want to summarize it. And look, OK, I know we have a rule on the board about mentioning a racial kumite, but <laughs> okay. hear me out, hear me out. If Tucker Carlson is gonna represent the white guy fighting style, <laughs> I will pay for that entire event somehow. I don't think it'll be hard to find the backing I need to put that yep. all together. Every penny I have, Heath and right? Every yeah. there, got some backing yeah. right there. So for their part- Patreon is a great cause this year. Great so cause, yeah. everybody, Check it out. come on. For their part, Media Matters basically told Fox's lawyers to eat lead. Media Matters CEO Angelo Carason explained the obvious, saying, quote, reporting on newsworthy leaked material is a cornerstone of journalism. And then in a quote that made me wonder what the hell I'm even doing here, he added, quote, perhaps if I tell them that the footage came from a combination of WikiLeaks and Hunter Biden's laptop, it will alleviate their concerns, <laughs> end quote. He also Excellent. pointed out uh, on Twitter that the first cease and desist letter that Fox's dumbass lawyer sent him actually said that Fox does consent to the release of the footage. And then they literally had to later that day send a second. No, no. What we meant to say was letter that added the word not. <laughs> a lot of our lawyers committed seppuku this year. OK, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been we're short. <laughs> We're short stabbed. So yeah, so if nothing else, the cease and desist is a clear indicator that Fox News knows there's more to come, and I am fucking here for it. <laughs> uh, of course, Carlson has refused to comment on the revelation, though one of the leaked clips is of him saying, quote, hey, media matters for America, go fuck yourself, end quote. So in a sense, I guess he already has. Yeah. <laughs> and in Pasta La Vista, baby. News. That's pretty good. Thank you. Authorities were left noodling over a mystery of food waste this week when a local woman in my home state of New Jersey reported that hundreds of pounds of raw pasta had been dumped near a stream near her house. Mm -hmm. Yes, authorities estimate someone illegally dumped over 500 pounds of spaghetti and macaroni, which took days to clean up. However, the police have no leads as of yet. Uh, whoa. It's not a pasta. Well, nope. Uh, so, so what amazing, because they, they set this up like rampart style across, along mm -hmm. the river, and that's what makes it so baffling, because like, if you just had to get rid of 500 pounds of spaghetti, it would just be one big pile, right? And if it was, if you were doing literally anything else, there's nothing 500 pounds is doing that 250 pounds wouldn't have taken care of. Right? <laughs> Thank you. So town of Old Bridge Mayor, Mayor Owen Henry, told the press that while the pasta posed no environmental hazards, it was a health risk, which is why they needed to clean it up so quickly. And then he did add, quote, why the fuck is our town called Old Bridge? How have we not changed this? <laughs> was haunted well taken, end it's, quote. Yes, leading to a very sternly worded letter from the people of Dildo, Canada, asking him to check his <laughs> fucking privilege. <laughs> yeah. Either way, the pasta is cleaned up now, but whatever Linguini did this, I hope he knows. We're uh -huh. going to catch a Torre him, and Whoa. when we do... He's going to far fall hard. What? 
Going to the state penne. I There's don't know. one. Thank you. So I, I love that of all three of us, the guy who thought, you know, I could probably bring this home with a series of puns was Eli. <laughs> what can I say? I played in my strengths. <laughs> and in How to Get Away with Murder News, we have three different stories that fit here, which is not great. First, we have the cop who killed Brianna Taylor getting hired as a cop again in a Jesus nearby county. But the other two are far less depressing. We also have Vermont passing a new law that says people can legally die with dignity there, even if they're coming from another state. And finally, we have a fake doctor in California just like doing doctor stuff in the back and then selling people treatment. But thankfully, he just got caught. So that one's a good ending, too. Are these related? Because if it turns out the cop tried to die with dignity and a homeopath just gave him a bunch of sugar pills to swallow, I am (laughs) on board. I want that to be the threat. I have a better one. The murder cop tried to get homeopathy and a fake doctor just euthanized him. Ooh. (laughs) Yeah, I I switched to Noah's. Those are both real now. So I'll start with the murder cop who is still a cop. And a hat tip to infinite tardigrades for the link. Which, depending on the length of the dormant stages, could just be one tardigrade, if you think about it. (laughs) That's excellent. So here's a quick background into the extremely tragic story of Breonna Taylor, in case you missed it. As part of an investigation into not Breonna Taylor, the Louisville Police Department got a no-knock warrant to show up at her apartment in the middle of the night. And in order to get that warrant, they did a whole bunch of lying. Yep. We know that. Because the DOJ did a big investigation and indicted three officers for conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and civil rights violations related to their very clear misleading of a judge to get that warrant. Also, a no-knock warrant is absurd and should not exist. The city has since banned them. Yeah. The argument for no-knock warrants are, what if the child kidnapper flushes the kids down the toilet while his wife is answering the door? That's the (laughs) best argument for no-knock warrants. A drug dealer flushes drugs down the toilet, so what? Just don't have those because murder people is bad. Yeah. (laughs) So they got the now illegal warrant, and on March 13th, 2020, seven white guy cops in plain clothes showed up and broke down Breonna Taylor's door with a battering ram. Her boyfriend was also there, and he never heard any announcement that these were police coming in, so when they smashed inside, he fired his gun once, believing they were intruders. Uh, He was correct about that. In response, the cops returned fire with 32 shots. 16 of those shots were fired by Miles Cosgrove, including the shots that killed Breonna Taylor. And the shots he fired went in three different general directions, indicating he was basically just spraying bullets all over the place like a lunatic into an apartment, which it turns out was adjacent to, you know, other apartments inside a building of people where they live. Normally, we'd have video of all of this, but Cosgrove's body cam just happened to be off that day. No. None of the other cops had one going either. It's so weird, yeah. And after all that, Cosgrove did not get convicted of a crime, never even charged by a grand jury. Yeah, which is too bad, because if that body cam had been on, it would have shown the 16 dissolving demon ninjas that came flying out of the apartment at all different angles (laughs) to attack him with nunchucks, and we would all feel so much better. See, I I feel like if we just went ahead and preemptively convicted cops of murder every time they turned their body cams off, we would be right more often than we would be wrong, right? It would be You're going to get a lot of, yeah, Yeah. you're going to ring up a lot of good ones there. So Cosgrove did get fired by the Louisville Police Department eventually, and the city agreed to pay Taylor's family $12 million. Seems pretty clear there was some kind of guilt there, Mm -hmm. but the state of Kentucky decided they would not be taking away Cosgrove's license to be a police officer. I guess you need to do something worse than wrongfully kill a person. Maybe it's two people? You have to do two people or more? I don't know. Well, last week, the Carroll County Sheriff's Office, just outside Louisville, decided that Miles Cosgrove was a solid hire. According to their chief deputy, We think Cosgrove will help reduce the flow of drugs in our area and reduce property crimes. We felt like he was a good candidate. Okay, to be fair, the biggest issues facing police today is not getting caught doing all those murders. And this guy has experience in that, right? He's really, yeah. Well, right. And and look, every time you reduce the population, you chip away at the drug business and property crimes. He has experience with that, too, with reducing the populations. He does. 
And that brings us to the national leader in the all-important death sector. Sorry, Keith. By so, and that mm. brings us. Do you mean now I'm going to talk about <laughs> it? Yeah, I did the thing with getting away with murder. Yeah, you did like isn't... a three-second story about pasta. I had to do but a couple extras. But it was extras. one story, and that's what matters. Those are the rules. Okay. So Vermont became the first state in the union to extend their existing death with dignity laws to anyone in the state, regardless of their official residence. Wee! It's, yeah, I know, I'm building, I'm building. It started really, you know, this is something. So yeah, it's appalling that we have states in 2023 with laws that say, you have to die slowly and painfully yep. here. That's the law. It's on the license but we do. place in New Jersey. 41 <laughs> states to be exact basically have that as a law. So great work by Vermont's tourism board for thinking outside of the box. <laughs> Whoever came up with this. Hopefully this will be great for their economy. They'll bring in yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I'm I support the whole thing, but I do think it was weird for them to use this as a bullet point on the tourism board's um, pamphlets and shit. I, I you know, <laughs> other Vermont ways to advertise it. Could be the last place you'll ever Things see. Things to do in yeah. Vermont. The best last place to die. But seriously, one more time, it's insane that death with dignity is not universal. That's bananas. Yeah. Horribly unethical thing we do. Good job, Vermont. And speaking of death with dignity, we have a story about that fake doctor in California. His name? Dr. Gavorkian. What? Okay. Seriously. Heath, if you tell me that this is Jack Gavorkian wearing a mustache, I am back <laughs> on board. It's, it's not Jack. It's Steve Gavorkian, oh. though. And pretty sure it's his real name. Big thanks to Johnny for the link. Skepticratnews, gmail.com. Good work. So... I have no idea how this is possible, but this guy, Steve Gavorkian, managed to run a fake doctor's office for years and treated thousands of patients using his real name. Apparently, people would come in for a checkup, and regardless of what symptoms they had, he'd run a blood test and come back with a treatment plan, which is terrifying because that would totally work on me. Especially with the name, honestly. I feel like it's one of those social contract guilt things, like I'd feel bad being skeptical of Dr. Gavorkian, his real name. <laughs> right, yeah. You know? But in the end, it's good news. Is An it? undercover investigator went to the office knowing that he had extremely high levels of a hormone that could indicate a very serious condition. And Dr. Gavorkian did one of his bullshit blood tests and just named some random other thing to treat. So now Gavorkian is charged with five different felonies and probably going to jail. And yeah, there'll be good jokes in jail, I think. Sure. Okay, but like... I feel like that should have been caught elsewhere, right? Yes, like, maybe, thank you. Maybe CVS <laughs> makes a call when all those prescriptions are written on Hello Kitty sticker notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's also kind of fucked up that it would have been legal if he'd written for entertainment purposes only somewhere on the intake form, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we ramped up from, like, the worst ever to, like, a good death thing. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and send us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new donors, you will be thanked next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D and D minus and citation needed. Available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Do you want to talk about how seven horses fucking died <laughs> at Churchill Downs in the last week before this That's death derby? Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 No. Seven. A lot of glue. Yikes. Did you watch the derby? No. No. Who so the fuck are you a big the horse derby? racing fan? <laughs> no. So I am scrolling on my phone and I see that a horse named Mage won the Kentucky Derby. 
And mm. as gentlemen who know both my wife and Rachel Wax, you know that when anything even Madge adjacent happens, I get 97 messages from them. So I see this and I'm like, oh, one letter away. <laughs> oh, because from, Madge, yeah. like Madge, Madge, well, Marjorie and, and, and the Bosnick. idea of a fucking pug running the Kentucky Derby is fucking hilarious, right? Yeah, like we that's can all awesome. agree that so, that's amazing. <laughs> I send this headline to these two women who, again, I have not passed a loaf of bread in the last seven years without these women going, that's Madge. Not a single loaf of bread. Well, she bred. She, she is bred. So I send yeah. them this headline, and they're both like, I don't get it. And I'm like, Madge, Mage, it's one letter away. <laughs> and they're like, I don't see it. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Are you serious <laughs> right now? So, so it like, even sounds a little like Mage. To, to just... To, to clue the listeners in, like, no shit, if you are with these two people, if you are with Anna and Rachel and you walk by, you're at a zoo, when you walk by a fucking walrus, they'll look at the walrus and they'll point to it and they'll go, he match. He right? match, like, that match. Literally everything is match. So they yeah. clearly were fucking with you. <laughs> Illegal. Okay, I thought maybe you like gambled on mage because of magic and you're a magic <laughs> guy or something. And, and you now made a I'm a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you did not bet on the Derby is what no, you're telling No, I did not. I just okay. wanted someone to appreciate how close Mage was to Madge. Wait, so, okay. Eli, when I saw that highlighted in your notes, I was like, oh, because it sounds like Madge. Thank you. I, like, I knew immediately what this sto- that, that, that somehow this story involved a little pug running the fucking Derby and winning. Mm-hmm. Do they have pug derbies? Oh, they, they don't. They do have a bulldog derby. I've sent you many TikToks of it. I will wear the fanciest fucking hat. I and will go to absolutely a pug derby white or gloves a bulldog derby and nothing else. Okay, but you Juleps. guys, you guys know like that they really did that. It would probably be insanely cruel. I mean, asking pugs to run or bulldogs to run in the first place is already cruel because they can't breathe and shit. But like, like that I'm, would add a level of cruelty to just being a bulldog in the first place. I'm I'm glad you asked, Noah. It is twelve feet long. <laughs> <laughs> there are the no tracks and there is a kiddie pool at the end <laughs> okay all right well in that case the most adorable two minutes in sports yeah them going 12 meters or whatever <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2023 